Hi, I'm Dr. Paul Inman from the annual meeting of the AAGL in Washington, D.C., and I'm uh, extremely fortunate to have Dr. Charles Coe from Milwaukee. And Charles, you're, you've been doing laparoscopic surgery for many years and even developed the Coe Colpotomizer. This is not a commercial, it's just an excellent instrument uh, for facilitating laparoscopic hysterectomy. And we've just learned that there's some new codes coming out in, in 2008. Uh, for coding for this, so should should we be chain turning all hysterectomies into laparoscopic hysterectomies now? That's a very provocative question, and uh, I, I I personally don't do much vaginal hysterectomies anymore, um, and the reason is uh, there's no question that when you have uh, incredible exposure as you do at laparoscopy, which you know is even better than laparotomy. Um, I think you can pick off your tissue very precisely and atraumatically. So the, the, I'm not advocating that this will happen, but I think it, it may be a creep in that direction because as more and more gynecologists get very capable of doing a total laparoscopic hysterectomy uh, in under one hour or even much less, um, and the advantages uh, become realized, which we can talk about, then uh, there's an extreme viewpoint, but I think it could move in that direction. So we're taking vaginal hysterectomies and turning them into laparoscopic hysterectomies. Yes. Um, now, I, I know uh, fully well the, the data that in comparison states that vaginal hysterectomy is uh, probably the most cost-effective, the least complicated, and so on. Um, but you're, you are taking moments in time of studies here and there, and you usually, whenever there is a randomized trial, the institution is good at one more than the other, so it's really not a fair uh, trial. There is no standardization of the operator, unlike when you have pills that can be randomized. But that being said, I think looking into the future, as long as hysterectomy has not been abolished by some other newfangled technique, <laughs> like uh, high-frequency ultrasound or something, I personally believe that the laparoscopic approach can be less traumatic than the vagina. Now, what about the very large uterus? Someone comes in with a uterus up to the umbilicus, or almost up to the umbilicus. Doesn't that significantly increase the risk? Uh, any surgery has risks. So a large uterus may uh, set the person up for more risk, but uh, you can also do a laparotomy and injure both ureters uh, in, in such a scenario, and the same at vaginal if you attempt that. There are some compelling uh, uh, aspects of laparoscopy which actually minimize the difficulty of doing large uteri. And if you think about it, what is a hysterectomy? A hysterectomy in the end is about uh, wringing the vagina or cutting the vaginal cuff, and detaching the uterus and then figuring out how to deal with it by mosellation or otherwise. With laparoscopic hysterectomy, because of the ability to insinuate the laparoscope way deep into the pelvis and with the counter traction or pushing of something like the cold cup or any other cup device, this brings the vaginal fornix further out so that you can see it more readily and therefore you have an end point to your operation. So if you know the end point of the operation, what about the start? The start of the operation is the infundibular pelvic ligament or ovarian ligament and so on. With a huge uterus, you really can't see it. But the technique to create space is to put a tenaculum on the opposite side Let's say if you're operating on the right infundibular pelvic, a tenaculum on the left side pulls the uterine fundus and the fibroids away, and you suddenly now have 2CM clearance where you can see everything, where you, where you can put your uh, PK cutter, you can put your whatever, all the various uh, uh, sealer cutters that are available on the market today, and just keep going down. Then the next question is the end point. You know, you will realize when you're doing a total abdominal hysterectomy in a large uterus, how difficult it is to get down to feel the cervix to open the vagina is just sunken. Well, with a cup that pushes up, you suddenly eliminated that difficulty. So, in bits and pieces, it is 
not only a doable operation, but it can become very safe with experience. Now, Charlie, often if you have a big wide uterus, it's hard to get down on the side of the uterus, and, and it's hard to see the ureters. How do you protect the ureters in that situation? That's a very good, very, very good question. Uh, part of the impetus for developing the colpotomizer was to avoid the need for dissecting the ureters when you secure the uterine vessels. And uh, th this has been shown in a smaller uterus, and uh, we've done various uh, uteral, uh, ure urethralysis and, and so on. And we show that when you push the cup up, the uterine artery above that is about three centimeters away from the ureter. And so when you have a tight situation, like with a big fibroid, if you've had enough experience using the cup system for hysterectomy, you have faith there. Mm -hmm. So you, you don't have to look for the ureter. Okay, well I think that's a very helpful thing to know. And so I want to thank uh, Dr. Charles Coe from Milwaukee at the AAGL meeting in Washington, D.C. Thank you. Thank you, Paul.